right guys, so this is, uh, this is coffee with protein in it. It's essentially like mixing instant coffee in water. You're supposed to mix it in water if you don't want all the caffeine, but I like mixing it in my coffee. So there's three flavors, mocha, caramel, macchiato, and vanilla frappe. I like the mocha the best. I like mixing in my coffee when I don't feel like eating in the morning and I just want to have something to drink, but I need protein. And you can use my discount code Amanda at PEScience.com to get 30% off. It's super foggy out today. I have not gone to the grocery store in like a few days and I'm like out of everything, so that's why I'm having this. And I have to go get fruit before I leave to where I'm going today. Carrie's gonna be here in like five minutes or head out. So I found an apple, but it's like the smallest apple ever, so. What's up guys? So what you're gonna see in part of this workout is PJ giving me instruction on all the different exercises that we did today. We did a lot of new stuff. You guys have never seen me do this before. You might have never seen any of these exercises done before. So you're gonna see him instructing me on some of them, but a lot of what you're gonna see is it's functional movements, guys. So again, it's not stuff that you're used to seeing on a fitness YouTuber bodybuilding channel. These are movements that are gonna help lay the foundation down for what movements are supposed to be. So that's something that PJ and I actually discussed a lot in our podcast. So after the fact, after this workout, I did a podcast with him and he was talking about the fact that a lot of people just go into the gym or you, you're looking for a workout program and that's going to have all these exercises and you want to know how to do the exercises and that's it. But you don't really think about what the movement is. So a hip hinge is the same movement that you do when you bend over to do a bent over barbell row. It's the same movement you do when you bend over to do good mornings. It's the same movement that you do when you're doing stiff legged deadlifts. So it's the same movement. But when you know about movements, guys, when you know about how to perform the movement and what it's going to do for your body. So the hip hinge, the way that you're moving your body, it, it activates your glutes and hamstrings. It also just keeps your back in the right position for a lot of different movements. When you know how to do those, you can essentially make up a workout anywhere and everywhere that you go. You don't have to stay set in your comfort zone of your own gym. You know exactly what the movements that you need to do to hit the certain muscle groups that you're trying to train, the goals that you're trying to reach. You need to just figure out what the movements are and then from there, you can you can make a workout around anything. So that was a lot of the stuff that we did today and a lot of the stuff that we talked about. I had a really good time with PJ. He's a very, very knowledgeable guy. I'm going to let you guys watch the rest of this footage. It might be a little bit more raw than you're used to, but I would encourage you to like watch through the entire thing only because you can kind of see where my form doesn't break down. I'm not doing a whole lot of weight here, but like my body is wrecked right now as I'm telling you guys this just because it's all based off of making sure that every single rep is perfect. I'm not doing a lot of weight, but I was it was hard as hell. So make sure you guys finish the rest of the workout and I hope you guys get a lot of out of it. Also, make sure you guys follow PJ. He has a lot of really good information on his Instagram. I think he's starting YouTube soon. But anyway, make sure you guys watch the rest of the workout. And thanks so much for watching. Catch you guys in a sec. I'm not a videographer, but I'm trying, so. <laughs> so where you get set up, we'll squat down. We'll get the band right in the crook of your elbows. And at the bottom, I'm gonna pull the band back to my chest. So I'm gonna keep good posture the whole time keeping my chest up. Then I'll stand up. The tension on the band pulling me forward, so I'm keeping this posture. Now I'll just do my hip hinge like we did in the warm up. Nice and slow on the way down. And then I'm gonna pause at the bottom and then fire my hips through to the mirror. I like this. Squeeze in my butt at the top, almost like I'm in a plank position at the top. So I'm really squeezing my abs and my yeah. glutes. I'll go down slow, cool. fire up, we're gonna do 10 of those. Gotcha. The band, pull it into your chest, lift it up, lock it in, slight bend in the knees, and then just reach your hips back. That's fine. Oh. That was nice. I'm gonna 
Oh, it's okay. Making sure my knee is right underneath my hip. So my knee, hip, shoulder, ear are all in a straight line. I'm gonna hold the kettlebell in my same side leg that's on the pad in the bottoms up position. You've done this before? Yeah. So making my sure my leg. wrist and elbow are right underneath it. I'm just gonna press straight up overhead. Bicep by my ear. Come down under control. And I like to keep my hand on my midsection so it helps keep my rib cage yeah. down. I would do about eight to ten of those. This way? Yep. It doesn't have to be super narrow if you're more comfortable a little bit out, wherever you feel like you've got good control. Keep that tailbone tucked underneath you. Yeah, perfect. What she's talking about? And I watched her. I was like, yeah, she's, she's she, all right. She gets it. She's a power lifter. Though, I so. may not always have that. Yeah. Who do you learn a lot of that stuff from? Do you have a coach that you work with? Or? I do. I've had a coach that I've been with for two years now. He's like a he's a bodybuilder, power lifter, and he likes. Like he has like lifestyle clients that are focused on fat loss, muscle gain mostly, but um, he understands the overall like athletic stuff. But most of his clients, I feel like there's just a certain niche that we're in that I'm now expanding out of, trying to at least. That's like super just focused on fat loss and stuff, and um, not as much on athletic performance and yeah. health. Yeah, there's a lot more out there. That's why. I my thing is performance, but it's, no, you know, I work in athletic so performance, true. but I work with a lot of CEO type guys who just want yeah. to be better at everything. Yeah. So that's my job. Is yeah. get to the point where you feel like you're losing control, that's where we stop. Yeah. Flat on the floor and hips up. So I've got a nice straight line from my knee, hip, and head. Now I'm gonna explode up by pulling on the bands and pull my chest towards the band. And I'm gonna hold at the top. So I'm gonna try to resist when it oscillates like that, keeping my shoulder blades squeezed together. And I'll come down under control. So explode up, lock in that position, down under control. I'm gonna shoot for about eight to 10 of these. Explode up. Explode. And you don't have to have the bands all the way at your chest. You can stop pretty much right when your elbows get to your body. So next one's going to be a one and a quarter Bulgarian split squat. So back foot on the bench. We're going to go all the way down to the top of my thighs parallel to the ground. My knee is just barely off the ground. Pause for two seconds. Come halfway up. Pause for two seconds. Down. One really important thing that I want you to work on, because I already saw it a little bit in the warm up, is keeping your tailbone tucked underneath you as we get in this position. Because people tend to Right. Let that happen, especially in split squat type yeah. so Keep that tailbone tucked. 80% of my weight is here. You see my foot wiggling, there's not much back there, it's just for balance. Okay? 
almost every female athlete, female trainer that I've worked with has this anterior tilted pelvis, mm -hmm. and almost every single one of them has had some sort of back pain. Yeah. And that's, I've had a very serious back injury, uh -huh. so I spent the past seven years pretty much researching Pushing and that, yeah. trying, changing things and finding yeah. out the best Talk ways to get away from it. Actually, the guy who really helped me a lot is uh, Quinn Hennick, who's down at Juggernaut. Oh. He's a PT down there. Bring your front foot back about two inches. There you go. You kind of sit back. There we go. Yeah. Anybody? So much, so much time under tension for your legs that if your goal is bodybuilding, fat burning, you just change the loading and change the volume. Yeah, that's and, good. Uh, and it's really easy to make it really hard, so you can yeah, you just add tension somewhere, yeah. add weight somewhere. This is one I do at the park, at a hotel gym where I don't yeah. have weights. I just add tempos to it, and it's hard to, to squat if you don't have a barbell once you reach a certain level of strength. This right. Is you can do. Right. That's so true. Crush yourself with your own body weight and a little tempo halfway. My knee is going to be under my hip. I'm going to stabilize with my opposite hand. And then this leg is going to be extended straight back towards the wall. So I want a straight line from the top of my head down through that heel. Yep. Then I'm going to grab the kettlebell. We're going to do a single arm row from that position. Oh. True. Really going to brace through my core to keep my body stabilized. So I'm going to be teetering side to side. I'll pick up the kettlebell. Bring my elbow right to my ribs. I don't have to bring the kettlebell all the way up. Squeeze my shoulder blade back, and then come down under control. Do about eight legs on each side. Go down. Yeah. The, the thing that's going to want to happen a lot is this hip opening yeah. that way. So keep that hip facing the bench. Good. And squeeze. You can slide back a little if you're unstable. You can put your toe hanging off so your whole shin's kind of on the bench. Oh, that makes sense. That'll provide a little more stability. And the next progression to make it harder would be where you were with your foot. Nice. Go eight to ten reps on each side. Excellent. Good, thank you. Yay. <laughs> 
So today we went through a, a full body workout where we used a lot of sport type movements that I use with my athletes to provide a new stimulus so to challenge Amanda in, in a lot of different ways. So we did a dynamic warm up and an athletic style dynamic warm up and then some resisted and assisted speed and athletic movements as part of our warm up. And then we got into the weight room and we did a banded zercher good morning. So a banded hip hinge. We did a kettlebell bottoms up single arm press. We did a quadruped bird dog row. We did a chaos inverted row. And we did a one and a quarter Bulgarian split squat. So we went through all different movement patterns to really challenge her body in some unique ways, challenge her stability, her core, and, and provide a new stimulus so she could get a new adaptation. And I think Amanda had some fun going through some, some very difficult new movements. I wanted to introduce her some new tools for her toolbox. Every single thing that I do from start, from start to finish, all of the different methods and tools and, and concepts that I apply and how I use those for athletes or for general people. Really, it was one, my passion, mm -hmm. and I loved teaching coaches and trainers. You know, it got to the point that Fine. I really enjoyed teaching what I know and, and it, I saw a clicking for people and I saw them taking these concepts that they see on YouTube or in these complex scientific journals and they don't really understand. And then I say, guys, it's not that hard. Here's how to use bands and here's why to use bands and chains in your training. And I break it down and they're like, oh my gosh, that, and now it's so simple and I can use it's it. It's fun so, when, that, when that click happens. It's awesome. It's I like, ah, oh, this person just gets it now and they can like take it and apply it. It's so rewarding and so fulfilling. And mm -hmm. to me, and, and one of the biggest things I got with people who came into my internships were they either did previous internships where they were treated like janitors and they just cleaned and kind of picked up a tip here or there. Yeah. Or they're working in a commercial type gym as personal trainers who didn't get to have the science education background or you know, they picked up a training certification and they're full of passion and enthusiasm. All right guys, we just finished, woo, we just finished up <laughs> at the podcast. It, was, it went so well. I'm so excited to present all this information to you guys. Obviously that was very different than what I'm used to and what you guys are used to seeing from me and probably most fitness YouTubers and that's why I wanted to do it and I'm actually gonna hire him to train me like once a week like it was just it was just amazing to do different things that really just worked my body and it's like not what I'm used to and it was difficult it was hard I want to get those I want to like make those things easy for me and right now they're really hard because I'm not used to them but anyways I'm so excited to share that podcast with you guys it was like one of my favorite ones so far anyways we have a drive back home we got Chick-fil-A I got a grilled chicken sandwich I think it was 350 calories but a little bit under 350 calories I forget and then and Carrie got nuggets in a fruit cup. <laughs> I'm opening this my mouth. She's on, she's on prep and she's tracked. With Chick-fil-A, you can get pretty macro-friendly items and I'm tracking as well. So we're gonna eat and head back. All right guys, we have our next podcast guest that I am interviewing today. He's coming. Okay, you gotta, coming. You gotta we'll, do something funny. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> that was creepy and scary. <laughs> hey, what's up? Hey, Amanda, okay. um, so we're gonna get started right now. Um, where did you get started with all of this? Was it, was it, you know, what was the motivation? My video, it was my videos. What, what was the motivation? Like, I'm you started? you. No, no, not today. Not help today. me, help me, please, thank get you. Get in, there you go. Let's get started, okay. right? Ready to go. Now. Now. This is like my 10th this interview is cool. this week. Just no driven. Yeah, be driven if you want to be. You don't have to hold it. Okay. There's a stand for her. I feel like it's coffee. I'm just like, <laughs> like, like taking it. Like. And we have these other two peeps. Hey, actually, I think there's an issue with this. Oh. There is an yeah, issue. Yeah, just... I have to fix it. I don't know why it's like that. <laughs> just don't. Yeah, it's I went to school slightly for, uh, ghetto. Exercise science. I, you know, I just. You see that there's a broken leg, issue. and you were like, <laughs> I need to fix this. I don't know if any of you guys know Brendan. We haven't even YouTube collab yet. Like officially. It's been a long time coming. No, uh, yeah, YouTube club. You happens. have to teach me how to do handstands. That's right, yeah, I have to do that. I cannot. Yeah. I have an assistant that can do all that. So. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> oh, that was bad. <laughs> that was bad. No, seriously, we're, we'll do something cool for sure. I've only thought it would like raw. It'll be like next year. This year, I think. Yeah. You think? Good? Can you pencil me in? I, no, yeah, I'll pencil you. <laughs> Okay. I don't use pencils, but sure. <laughs> Google Calendar invite. I saw, I saw that calendar. Oh, we're um, working out together on the 23rd yeah, can, of March. Yeah. We'll film there. Not in LA. We'll be somewhere else. We just wrapped up. Putting the microphones away for the night. Hey, look, time How'd you do? Do you see the arm, though? Aw, Flex you're flexing so hard. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm, like, trying hard right now. We just had a long podcast where he talked. Yes, like... Yes, yeah, so I'm, like, super pumped. I got, like, my veins popping everywhere. Like, <laughs> it was so no, passionate. She's, she, hands down, the best podcaster I've been with. You've never been with any other podcaster. 
<laughs> it's like, yeah, you're my favorite really uncle, and then you're like my only uncle. Really, no, she was really, really good. Asked perfect questions. Stay tuned, guys. It's going to be insane. Stay tuned, guys.